Now, have you ever found yourself navigating office politics? I'm sure you have, and maybe you felt like you're drowning in stress because of work. It does sound familiar, doesn't it? Um, well, our next guest has a book full of strategies you can use to survive and master your workplace. Yeah, he's here to teach us all about it. Author of Office of Cards, David A. Chervelin, is here in the studio with us. Uh, good morning to you. Um, this sounds like uh, the Bible that we all should have had <laughs> 20 years ago. Um, what are the main points of advice that, that people should follow? What do we need to do in the office environment? Yes. To survive <laughs> yeah. and thrive. Actually, yeah, the thriving is the point because surviving, in my opinion, is, is not enough, right? We should always aspire to be, to be happy and to get the most out of the time that we give to the companies that we work for. So essentially, I divide my, my guide in three parts. There are some rules, some truths, and some principles. So the truths are what you need to accept you know uh, and, and they are like reality it, but it's a way of describing the reality that people don't think about when they are in it every day um, the rules are about uh, the pillars of your decision making in a company and how you make uh, you know how you interact with people and how you get people to help you and to care about your success instead of fighting against you which often happens and then principles which are more practical pieces of advice that you can implement in your everyday in the book, I've used the hashtags to identify these things so that people can share on social media their stories and hopefully they will lead to a discussion that can help as many people as possible. So four, four major hashtags you've got. Uh, it's a Game of Thrones. Yes. Uh, there is no fair, consensus yes. rules and perception is reality. Yeah. Which is so true. But explain yeah. it's a Game of Thrones. That's so Game of Thrones, so Game of Thrones, great show. Uh, one of the things that... A lot of them that, die, though. <laughs> exactly. That's the thing. You can't predict what's going to happen. Who thinks that, you know, a guy that we all care about is going to die in the show? Mm. Nobody does. And yet, that is the beauty of that show. And that is the beauty of life. You, it's unpredictable. You don't know what's going to happen. And so, the thing is, a lot of people, when something unexpected happens, they get sad, they, get, they feel defeated, you know, and what do I do about this and what do I do about that and my life is unhappy, how can I solve it? If you accept it, you know, th there is a paradigm shift. Like there are some, some things that I can change and that I can influence and I'm going to do it and some things I just need to accept as they are. And how important is it to form alliances in the workplace when you've got a goal in sight or is it more important perhaps to see the top dog in the uh, office? Yeah. or newsroom and uh, <laughs> and go Might directly for that person. Okay. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's important. I mean, this is a great question. One of my principles is make no enemies. No enemies. It doesn't matter who the top dog is. If you have the top dog on your side and everyone else against you, it's not going to happen. You're not going to mm. win because they will try to take you down as much as possible. <laughs> and that is not good, right? They will try to win and you lose. But what I, what I try to insist on is the only way to win is if everyone wins. And there are ways and principles in the book that explain how to make sure that your victory is also somebody else's victory. So that everyone is, is happy. And then again, it doesn't mean that everyone wins at, to the same extent. Some, some people win more than others. But at least it's never good when your victory means my defeat because I'm going to resent you and I'm going to get revenge maybe at some point and you don't want that. So it's really about building a lot of relationships that can help you get to the point where you want to get, whatever mm. that is. It mm. doesn't necessarily mean you become the CEO. It could be, it could be everything. And that hashtag perception is reality. How do you go yes. about um, getting everyone in the office to think you're fantastic and brilliantly professional at doing your job? People already think that about you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I know, but I'm thinking about you. <laughs> yes, it's for the others, right? Um, so perception is reality is really about people realizing that the way they view the world is a subjective. And so when I think that is a problem, it may not be a problem at all. And so when I say perception is reality, it's like the movie The Matrix, right? Mm. You live in a world which is the result of how you see it and how you feel about it. It's not necessarily how it is. And so sometimes you, you perceive that someone is hating you, and then you go speak to a common friend and say, well, why is this guy hating me? Mm. And, and this person may say, he's not. It's just, you know, it's way of, of dealing with people. So you perceive this guy has a problem with you, but, but they don't. And so... But what if you go to a colleague and say, you know, why does so-and-so hate me? And they say, actually, he really does dislike you. <laughs> You're right in your perception. Then you need to understand why. Because, again, the percep perception is reality. It doesn't mean that it's necessarily true or not. I just mean that you okay. need to accept that you may be wrong, that your point of view is not the only one. Mm. And so you need to seek uh, some sort of... Uh, 
uh, input from other people to make sure that what you think is the case is actually the case. Mm. And when you know that it is the case, then you can devise a plan to, to tackle the situation. And do you practice what you preach or are some bits of advice harder to achieve than others? It's not easy to live by these rules. I mean, I sleep off the path every day, but, but I have a path, right? And so I think some rules are easier than other rules. The one thing that I say in the premise of the book is when you read this book, Amazon says on the Kindle, it takes six hours to read. My advice is it should take 60 because it's very dense and some of the things that you need to change are very, very deep mm -hmm. in you, in the behavior, in your attitude towards the work and towards life. And so for this to happen, you need to have an open mind. You need to put what I write, which is by no means the truth, it's just a point of view, into your own reality. And then think, what does this mean for me, right? I may not always be right in, in, in every case, but the point is, if you think about it and you challenge the way you deal with the, with the world and with the work, you will definitely see an improvement in the relatively short term, I would say. Mm, guaranteed, all your money back. <laughs> yes, absolutely. David, thank you very much. Really, really thank interesting. You. If you're thinking of quitting your job, uh, this book could possibly help you stay and be happy. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Let's see what's uh, happening with the weather now. Jo's always very happy in her job. <laughs>